Hi, my name is Tony Kofi, um, musician, composer, and I'm here at the Cookie Jar, um, playing with uh, Nick Hislam, uh, Neil Hunter, and Jeff Pearson. I think, in retrospect, the saxophone was attracted to me. Okay. The saxophone found me, and and uh, we uh, we made a connection. You know, uh, I mean, a, a, a lot of uh, there are a lot of factors of uh, me starting the saxophone, but because I was self-taught, you know, I I. I discovered the saxophone in a very unusual way and plus you know it, it all happened due to an accident I, I'll say you know in in a, um, in a short kind of story way that I had a I had an accident and uh, and I, I realized that you know uh, during the accident that there was something else waiting for me which was music so music was my kind of outlet you know finding music was was a great was a great thing for me um, I think you know what I think it was something to do with my my father because you know I had a lot of brothers I grew up with seven brothers and uh, well six brothers seven including myself and what happened is that you know, we were all very, very lively. And what my father would do is to uh, get us settled, he would take us out in, in his van and he'd put like uh, BBC Radio 3 on. And I can remember, you know, almost like it was yesterday that they always had jazz on at that time. So, you know, and I must have been about five years old. So I've always heard the sounds of jazz from when I was really young. So I, I think that you know my, my love grew for it because those rides in the car on, on the Sunday night just to settle us, you know, he used to put the music on gently and they'd be playing some amazing jazz. I didn't know what, you know, who was playing, but all I know is I love that music. Right. You know? My practice changed because obviously, I, in the beginning, I, I, I needed to get to know the instruments. So I, I practiced scales, arpeggios, I did all the formal things, you know, made sure that I, I got to know the instrument well. So, and that was, that was the start, that was the foundation. So I did a lot of foundational work, you know. Later on, it was more to do with sound, colors, shapes. So I worked on a lot of that, just getting all that together. So now it's all about sound, sound, color, shapes, and and uh, speaking with um, my inner voice. You know, so I, I do a lot of warm ups, but obviously now it's it's more, you know, it's it's, it's more complete. So I, you know, because I know the instrument well, so I'll sometimes uh, work on like motifs. You know, uh, the are link, quite linked to changes. You know, uh, shapes and, and colors play a big part in my playing. Mm -hmm. So, so I kind of like have a kind of um, a kind of a complete thing that when I practice, you know, I'll start with like long tones, and then I'll start practicing different shapes. Mm -hmm. You know, angular stuff. You know, so so it's, it's, it's not the it's not the it's not the foundational stuff that I used to do before. Uh, in the UK, I must have been must have been a teenager, and I, I had my first UK gig in a wine bar with my brother, and we were just playing standards, and uh, it, it was a good thing because you know I, I got to learn a lot of standards then. Uh, in Europe, I think my first European gig was with a, a jazz hip hop group called Us Three, you know, and we, it was a mixture of uh, jazz and hip hop, and uh, it was amazing because I got to see the world. I got to uh, meet a lot of jazz musicians on the way, you know, Ernie Watts, Jackie McLean, JJ Johnson, uh, uh, Horace Silva. Uh, just Lee Rittenor, loads and loads of people, Lou Donaldson, uh, Dr. Lonnie Smith, so all these tours 
they, they, um, that I did with the Jazz Hip Hop group, it actually got me to meet all these great musicians and have lessons with a few of them, like mm. Donald Byrd, uh, I met Joe Henderson, so I met a lot of these people and the tour lasted three years, so it was great and it allowed me to buy my instruments and, you know, and really focus on uh, practice as well, you know, because I knew that these guys were the real deal, so, you know, that tour actually, actually made me want to be a better musician, you know. So it just wasn't about the tour, it was about the musicians I met on the tour. Right. And I spent, I remember spending the whole day in, um, in Rio with Donald Byrd, practicing, he'd show me things and we were working on sound, we were working on a lot of different shapes. Mm -hmm. So this is where a lot of my practice has changed now because Donald Byrd showed me a lot of things to do with shapes, colours, sound, you know, and, and working, working with like, you know, uh, not with rigid time, but working on like, uh, almost like elastic time. And then I discovered that from working with um, people like Andrew Hill, right. who was able to stretch time, you know, mm -hmm. and no matter what kind of tempo, you know, and working with people like that helped me to relax as well. And then in America, same thing with us three. So we did America as well. You know, but I got my own gig in America uh, uh, some years ago. Did a uh, Rochester Jazz Festival with my quartet, which was amazing. Which was absolutely amazing. You know, got to uh, sit in and meet people like Joe Lovano. Uh, yeah, it's just great. Just met so many people. I, I can't. I can't even remember. You know, but it was fantastic. was with, uh, well, two people, Sam Rivers, Andrew Hill. I got to work with them. I got to tour with them. And they are they, they are firmly in my mind. And also, gosh, so many, World Satsphone Quartet. So, I've done so many gigs with them, I've been with them for seven years. And uh, also, uh, Abdullah Ibrahim, you know, uh, recently, for the last four years, I've been working with Abdullah Ibrahim, and that's like, it's, it's a dream. It's a dream country. I never thought that I'd I'd, I'd get to work with such prolific musicians. So you know, I, I feel I feel pretty blessed and I'm grateful as well. You know, it, it's, it's very humbling you know, to be able to uh, work with those great guys. You know what? When I'm when I'm doing uh, my music, I'm 200% focused. You know, it's it's. You know, I, I'm, I'm very, very focused and same with the family life when I'm at home, you know, I'm, I'm home, I'm dealing with the family, dealing with my, my kids, you know, and, and I'm not kind of like doing any music at home, you know, so I, I, I balance it. So when I'm out doing music, that's it. But when I come home, you know, I have to switch off and become, you know, a father, you know, uh, you know, a partner, mm. and um, and do school runs, yeah. cooking, cleaning. You know, taking my son to football. So I do all those things. Mm. You know, and I won't call them mundane things. Mm. I would say that these are very important things. It help. It helps me to balance as well, mm. because then when I'm out there, I can really, really focus on what I do best. Mm. But then I, I do have times when I I will go and practice. You know. And uh, and that's that's my solitary moment where I can just like you know get into uh, practicing and, and work on new things. You know. So yeah, I, I'm always searching. That's the thing. I'm always searching. I'm never I'm never satisfied with with uh, what um, uh, I do. I, I need you know I need to keep searching because I know there's a lot more to come. Very, very important because you, gosh, I've, I've done so many collaborations with Byron Wallen, Trevor Watkins, Larry Bartley, oh, just name a few, Courtney, Courtney Pine. Um, I think collaboration allows you to um, uh, view and play music from a different perspective, from a different perspective. So that's that's really important, very important, and. 
it's you know because I, I have I have a way I have my own approach to music you know but getting someone else's you know like I've just recorded a, an album that is due out next year with Larry Barton I'm allowed to put my personality my stamp to the music so I, I think you know it is it's very important because uh, with collaboration I, I'm uh, I, I approach my music differently as well Unbelievable. Missed up on that. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yes. Um, uh, I, I, I got the call from Jamal Adin Takuma uh, and we went to New York, did a rehearsal and you know there was no written music, we had to memorise everything and I, I, had to, um, I had to do all the work on tenor and, uh, and working and rehearsing at Ornette's house. You know, and then going into the studio and just me and Ornette in the booth and you know i got to i got to um hear and understand what he he was really about because you know you, you hear him on the record and everything you know you think wow it's great but actually be in the same space as him uh it was just out, out of this world i, I I'll, I'll never forget that moment as long as i live Oh, lessons I've learned on the way, I think, is to try and be myself, you know, try to be myself as much as possible and not get into any kind of, you know, uh, any, any of the kind of competitional kind of uh, approach, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very much my, my, my own person, you know, when it comes to music, I, I try to be myself as much as possible, and I say that uh, to other musicians, yeah, you can, you can learn so much about, about, uh, about the, 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 uh, the technical side, but how I've tried to be myself was to find my own voice, that's the most important thing, because your voice is number one then the other stuff comes after it so finding my voice was one of the most important things and I, I have done that I've managed to do that but as, as a, with a lot of um, you know with a lot of experiment experimenting and uh, you know uh, with mouthpieces reads and 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 trying to uh, and trying to shape the way uh, I I, uh, I approach music, so so sound sound is most important. So I say to any young musician uh, coming up, find your sound, no matter what instrument. Find your sound, and there you'll find your style. Mm. You know, because it's very very it's quite linked. You know, the sound is linked to the style. Mm. Okay. So very very important. I see myself hopefully still playing, you know, uh, composing more. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to. I'd like to be doing a lot more composition. Obviously, I've I've, I've been so busy with a lot of other stuff that uh, I, I haven't composed for a few years, and I want to sit down and start composing more. I want to compose for a big band. Orchestra, um, composed strings, you know, and, and the other thing I'd like to get into is like, you know, uh, composing for like movies, you know, you know, film scores. So, because I, I have a lot of ideas, I have a lot of melodies going on, uh, you know, up here, and, and yeah, so I, I like to just be able to sit down and, uh, and write more, you know. Uh, I, I think that that's, that's quite important as a musician because. You know, uh, you, you leave something, you know, you get to leave, yeah, a legacy, you know, you get to leave something behind and, and you know, who knows, you know, someone else might take it up and play this. So, yeah, I mean, I've composed quite a lot of tunes uh, for small ensembles, but I'd like to do more for big ensembles. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Tony Kofi and you're watching Leicester Jazz House TV.